Well, it's Wednesday, April was 20th, 21st, 21st, I guess. And we got a little snow on the ground. A little less than we had this morning. This morning the ground was pretty well covered. It had to sweep the truck off and everything. But it's warmed up. You can see out over the hill there, flurries in the air. Still got snow in the forecast for tonight yet. Maybe an inch or so, who knows. But it's amazing, people are all worked up. Oh, this is April and we're getting snow. Yeah, it's April, we get snow. Hell, years ago when my dad used to make syrup, we were still tapping trees. Still had trees tapped at this time, I should say. He was still making syrup. Nowadays, if you don't get your trees tapped by the beginning of February, you don't get nothing. Hell, guy's been done tapping for over a month now. Warmed up there and they pulled everything. But, as I say, it's just a little bit of snow on the ground here right now. But I'd show the barn here. Been trying to do this. I made a couple of these videos. Didn't like them. Deleted them. But uh, yeah, it's a coverall building, and it's 140 foot long and 62 foot wide. And this side's got a curtain. It's on an eight foot pony wall, so it's an eight foot curtain. Curtain's 140 foot. This all opens up in one shot. It's got the uh, the mechanism in the middle to raise it. If I would have to do over, kind of think I might have done two four-foot curtains. More times than not, don't matter, but it would be nice to some days maybe only open the top half and not the bottom half. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a mix, but this is this is the way it worked out. And like I said, this is 62 foot wide. Uh, originally this end was the plastic canvas material like the main cover. Oh, it's probably been about four years, five years ago now. I ended up replacing it. The lacing I was holding it was starting to deteriorate and coming loose. And the company I found to do it, they said they couldn't relace it, which is Later we found out the rings that are welded onto the cover, fused on, were breaking loose anyhow. They said they could only do it from the inside. They couldn't relace it from the outside, which I think is, they're full of crap. Because these red ends, this end that comes over the face here, if I was to take that cable loose right there, this will actually fold back about two foot, three foot, something like that. And you can get in from the top to relace it. But, now well, we, they talked me into it and decided it probably is better. We did replace it with sheet metal. This is the south end of the barn. This gets all the weather anyhow. So I think it should have been um, sheet metal to begin with. Put them vents in up the top. I don't know if they do much. I don't seem to have as much condensation problem in there as I used to, but I don't think them vents are big enough to really make that much of a difference. Um, you know, like I say the side, bottom eight foot was always sheet metal. Um, curtain on the other side, which I've shown before that I was fixing, that's four foot by eight foot. And like I said, a building like this, once they get the post set, they could have this building up in two, three days. Doesn't take long at all. It's more concerned when, how much wind you got to pull the cover on with. This building actually doesn't stay too bad in here in the winter. I mean, it's usually within about 10 degrees the outside temperature. But with the curtains ebbing down, with no wind coming through, you don't really notice it. I mean, I've milked in that parlor two degrees before. You know, it's, it gets cold enough in here, the dipper that I dip the cows with will be freezing up before I'm done milking. But temperatures like that, like I say, they don't bother the cows as long as they're dry and like I say, you keep the wind off of them. 
Now this end here is still the canvas, the plastic, I don't know what you call this. Um, by next spring, if I'm still milking cows, it might be a big problem because right there the lacing is breaking. Same way with on the other side. But if this, I don't think this is going to come completely down. The wind might get it and rip it apart and stuff, but wind at this end of the barn ain't going to hurt as much. I would like to get that resheeted in sheet metal, but that's a little more money than I need to be spending, or even I even have. I couldn't even buy the screws to put that on with. Got to get my door fixed yet here. Hooked that with the TMR mixer one day. I don't know how. For 15 years, I've been driving through that damn thing and never had a problem. And then one day I did hook it. Um, but yeah, well, you can see uh, maybe it shows a little bit better up there how that's coming out. Uh, one thing we did on this, which I don't know if I would do again. I get way out here so I can see the top. Ain't got a very good angle, but the up there on top we got six chimney vents. And the theory behind that is, you know, heat rises, and with the cows breathing in there, that's where you get that condensation, and it'll rise and collect up there. And these vents are supposed to be drawing air through there. I don't think they ever did that much good. I mean, these things are like two, two foot square, maybe two and a half foot square. They're a good three foot tall. I mean, they, they stood up to the guy's waist when he was putting them up there. But like I said, I don't know if I would do that again or not. They, th this one does leak some, which not a big deal, it's just falling on a little bit of a drip. But uh, it's nothing that really notices. I mean, like I say, it's a barn. I am starting to get a little worried on this cover somewhat. I don't know if I can see it right now or not. Yeah, it probably ain't gonna come up on camera, but right on this rib here. Yeah, it ain't gonna be right with what my finger is, but there's a couple areas looks like it's starting to work a hole in. And like right there is where the joint is, where the sections of the trusses bolt together. Now there was, or is, a rubber piece that was set over top of it to protect that, but as this flexes and stuff, it could have got worked out or whatever. Like I say, this is um, the cover. What the truss system in the cover is rated for is up, or, well, I should say was guaranteed for. This thing, he didn't have a guarantee after two years. But um, it's supposed to have been warranted for 15 years, prorated. With this truss spacing and stuff, it's rated at up to a 91 mile an hour wind and 65 pounds per square foot snow load. So, I mean, that's a lot of stuff. I mean, I've had snow up to them up to them vents before I mean I don't think I've ever had three foot up there but I've had enough where it's pushed that cover down in between the trusses I mean it's got a, lot, a fair amount of stretch and stuff to it but yeah like I say it's both been warranted how well, after well, like I say it was I put this we built this in 2006, moved in there in 2007. In fact, the beginning of this month is when we broke ground 15 years ago. And they started putting this up about the beginning of June by the time they got it here and stuff. Uh, and I believe it was 2009 when the company went bankrupt. I mean, that's going to be a story for another video. Because uh, it was a local building was one of the ones that ended up bankrupting the company overall. It wasn't this truss design. This is what they call the legend, and it's just a simple arch. They have a bigger building. Like I say, this one goes up to 72 foot wide. You can get it, 
and then they have a Titan series which comes up and then comes over more like a house shaped and I forget how narrow that one goes but that one goes up to I believe 160 foot and uh, one local fair they put up they put up like 140 by 260 or 320 I forget what it was when I do the next the video about the warranty and the bankruptcy I'll post an article with it uh, that I found online about it but uh, yeah like I said one reason I decided to go with this one over conventional pole building like that one is if like I say I sell the cows I can cut this barn this can be tore down and moved sold um, when we first put it up when they came in to assess it it all depends how much concrete you have in there it's considered a temporary building and there would have was no taxes on it because it's considered temporary I don't know because at that time all we had was the feed alley and stuff I don't know if they've ever come back and reassess since we did all this stuff in here and they might consider this permanent now and it might be taxed I hundred percent but yeah it's considered temporary it could be moved um, and like I say I mean it's just quick and easy that's why I figured I'm gonna be the last generation with cattle here all I needed something's gonna last about 25 years like I say if this last like I, say, I doubt if I'll be milking cows in the next 10 years anyhow regardless of what I do but yeah I got another 10 15 years I could be doing this but like I say I'm feeling it's gonna be a change of venue at some point here but uh, Eh, like I said, I don't know what else to say about it. They say it holds up pretty good. You know, some things I gotta make sure. Like I said, if they start calling for high winds and stuff, I gotta make sure that door down there is closed. You know, it's been a kind of toss up whether you want the air to pass through or not. But I mean, I've had it one time where it was lifting this cover off the trusses. And I don't know, maybe that's a good thing with them vents up there, the way it sandwiches around that cover and it's bolted to that upper truss upper purlon that it might help keep it in place so well like I, said, I don't know what else to say about this what more I want to say other than the main main thing on these buildings that they were telling me is like a regular pole building, they want to push down. They got weight. Well, this one, they say is like a parachute. It wants to lift. And these posts go in the ground five foot. They drilled a two foot diameter hole, five foot deep, belled it out to three foot. They got rebar, a piece of rebar going this way and a piece of rebar going this way through that post. They set it in there, filled with concrete, so now that's, like I say, belled out and acting like an anchor in the ground. I don't know if it needs to be that strong, but that's what they recommended. And this, at the time, was a newer truss setup. This one has a bracket that mounts to the face and then the bolt that goes through. And I guess this gives it flex. A neighbor up the road put one of these up. Oh, well, probably, he's... His has got to be close to, his has been up there over 25 years now. I think he had at least 10 years before I built this one. And he's never done nothing to his cover. He's had uh, vents replaced or actually installed in the top and the end panels redone, but he's never done the main cover. But his truss system at that time was they had this cut on an angle and this actually bolted onto that plate however this whatever this angle was up here and then they had a cable that ran from one side of the truss to the other and that's what they're saying the way they however they put the tension to it how much tension and the height they put it is what set the snow load on that truss design but they say it's held up pretty good 
So, well, I'll take a walk in here. I got something else to show. Yeah, I drugged this one on long enough, but I thought I'd show this. This calf was born probably about a week ago. I would have probably done a little bit sooner on it, but I got in one of my moods again. Things don't improve. But this is uh, mother's milking shorthorn, and the father was a red and white Holstein. So, in this way, like I say, I, uh, I don't know, my niece, well, that was one of my niece's cows, I think. Maybe it's the daughter of one of my nieces. I don't know, like I say, whether we have, re I think we got the registration papers for it or not, but if we wanted to register this calf as a shorthorn, we still could breed near a red Holstein because they do allow one generation of breeding, I guess, because they want to extend, uh, need to get more bulls in the registry, I guess, or more calves, cows. So, but yeah, we got that one now, and that's not my cow, but the neighbor's, one of his shorthorn, well, two of his shorthorns are due here by the beginning of the month. Now, one shorthorn in the Guernsey, the Guernsey's due here at the beginning of the next month. She's due like May 4th. Where are you hiding at? Peeking in there. And then he still has his two Jersey heifers here yet. They said it was due the beginning of this month, and now it's been three weeks and they're still not bagged up enough to calves, so. So I got several cows to fresh in here. But I decided I'd end this one with that. Yeah, that's my opinion too. Piss on it. Thanks for watching.